Okay, so we're going to head into the food forest today to do a harvest of cassava. So the cassava has been planted in the early stage of the food forest uh, renovation that we've been doing after pruning plants, opening space, making light. The cassava is one of our first big power plants in the first sort of 9 to 18 months that holds a big space and it's ready to harvest. If we leave these ones much longer, they're going to get too old and fibrous and these are not our really young, super soft, delicate cassava. These are going to be bigger, older, chunkier cassava which we're going to use to, to grate up and to ferment and to make a whole bunch of sort of value-added products from them. These few cassava here we're going to harvest were planted probably 18 plus months ago. This is a non-irrigated site um, but they've grown really well and happily. We sort of planted them <laughs> tail end of the drought and they've um, they've bounced and fattened up. And you can actually see here we've got some some roots starting to show, like there's a little root there coming up to the surface. And the chickens have been scratching around here a bit in the last summer and maybe taking a bit of soil away from it. Once this cassava comes out of here, and the reason that we're taking this cassava out today and right at this time why we prioritise these is that firstly they're ready, they're big and ready, it's going to be a good harvest, but um, to the south of them is two plum trees which are fully deciduous and I've just gone in there today and observed they're just about to shoot and flower bud, like they're um, now that, that shortest day, it's like they're really quick in coming into flower and, and leaf. So, if we remove this now, we open up this whole north side to flood them with light and energy for their, their next season of growth. Uh, so that's kind of the context of why we're doing what we're doing today as well as harvesting the food is we're creating this space and sunlight strategically right now for that plum crop to, to come on. When you have a frost context, right? It's an important time to manage the cassava because it's going to lose its leaves anyway. So if you let the plant lose its leaf for the frost, the root not going to be as good as if you just copy it now and yeah wait for the next year or you just harvest if it's a, it's the second year like in Tom's case yep. you just harvest because yeah after two years it's only good for flour it's not good for for table cassava anymore so that's what oh, that's kind yeah of this particular variety the white cassava which is our fastest growing one that one really is up to two years is as long as you can stretch it without it getting really fibrous. Mm. Some of the other varieties we might look at later, we can more like have two to three years and they still retain the integrity of the food without getting too, yeah. and they can get really big. And yeah. some of them can be many years, hey, they can just be dig a tuber when you want one. And they, yeah, yeah, they still use it for flour, as we're going to show down at the kitchen, like a, you can have tubers like that being used for flour, like a, yeah. more than seven, 10 kilos in a, in a single plant. We've done a few little tip prunes like this, through the summer we just come through and we do this just to do so you don't even need tools for this you kind of come through and take all the tips out to push them up so that's why these are nice and bushy they otherwise would have been growing really tall and lean and they would have actually fallen out and been snapping over our pathway so yeah so today you're gonna cook some in Ogruno mm -hmm. you're gonna save some leaves to cook so you get the chips like the Balinese no normally do like for yeah, I've heard, uh, the first time I got shown cooking cassava leaves was in Brisbane. It was actually by an African woman and she always said, yeah, up to the third world. And then after that, they get a bit older and they have more of these um, carcinogenic cyanide compounds when they get a bit older. Yeah, at the end, after we harvest, we put this material aside, we'll use it to cover up all the bare ground that we open up. But we don't want to chop it too low because we also learning like all the islanders and everyone that she we need to do a little dance to put the whole roots from the ground, ground without to break the roots in there so you want to take as, as much roots you can at once otherwise then, then you need to harvest one by one so here you can see it has the roots come so normally you come if the hori hori or if the mad you can lose it up in the soil so you want to lose the soil before you pull, otherwise the roots going to break and then you need to dig every single one. So. If they're exposed, 
Yeah, for too long. Yeah, that's true. There we go. There we go. So we've got our first root there. Ready to roll? Yeah. And they're all unique characters and have their own See that shape like and size. And how the plant is moving already when I'm putting the shovel. So you want to lose it up, if you like, and do the little dance before you take it out. This yeah. one's a bit harder to do the dance with because we've got the. So you can see we've. Set, just hold on a minute, but. So you can see here the angle we planted these at. So. 45 degrees. Yeah, 40, we actually. Nowadays we even plant 15 degrees. That's been our Fijian tip. But 15 to 45 is often common. And then more, more of the roots then generally follow out that angle. So you can see here we dug that one root. We've broken this one off, but you can feel as you're going here, most of the roots are going back that way. Yeah. yeah. So if you grow on the angle, like two people come and only lift the whole plant. So Clara, let's do it. We've got the right angle. Let's pull her out. There she comes. So we've got some chunky ones there. So this is, like I say, this is more that 18 plus months to get that sort of size. There's another one here. So there we go. Now if you're a poor family, you dig one of these up, you know you're getting dinner tonight. The cassava originally comes from South America. So in Brazil, the indigenous people were using cassava for everything, do you know, even for alcohol. So they, they put the basages in cassava. So even has a lot of indigenous legends around the cassava plant. Hey, this one's a goodie. So let's try and let's try and pull this back this way now so we don't break that one. But, oh, it already was. So that's a good, that's two plants together. That's quite a nice harvest. Yeah, so that one's actually gotten a little bit old even and rotted, but there'll be some good ones on there, so. You can see how the soil, do you know, is... It, yeah. Sometimes after take a cassava, what we do is put another tree to replace because as the whole, the soil is so much better than before. Here was pretty exposed to the sun because it's right on the corner and the cassava really helps this break down the soil. Yeah, like that's, the, that's the, the, right. The, Since we got into planting, um, besides uh, the nursery shade for the young trees, the cassava, according to the agroforestry people, like uh, it has a lot of um, affiliation with the mycorrhiza fungi. Mm -hmm. So it actually transforms, it starts evolving the, the soil profile from a grassland to a forestry system as well. Yeah. And the 45 degrees is also used, or like an angle is also used, as you could see, like most of the roots were facing the direction in which it was planted. So sometimes people plant them like a, out, they plant like a, a stave. They plant them like that and they chuck seeds here. Yeah. They plant, they plant them like that, and then you chuck seeds in here, so the, the cassava is going to work the soil and like a, change the profile of the soil for like the forestry, for a forestry system, and then like these seeds are going to sprout in between the cassava. What sort of seeds? Slow growing trees. Yeah, yeah, trees. Yeah. yeah. So things like, a really good one for that, because I've tried that with a few different trees, and the ones I've found are the best in our region anyway, is like long-term slow-growing fruit trees like avocados or jackfruits, something that's got a big seed that, that because this grows very quick and fast and it needs to have a bit of a, a food storage to see it through that early time as well and get it going. And something that has a slow growth rate. So that means so in its first year or two is not going to accelerate or need high levels of sun. It's going to sit under that, just creates a whole forest above it. So, and like Ricardo was saying, with that angle, most of the roots grow there and it allows us when we harvest this to not make too much disturbance to that space that that tree is growing in the earlier, earlier stage. If we just did this there, we'd have all this knot of roots all tangled around it and we're probably going to damage or possibly even kill that tree when we harvest it. Yeah, yeah. Unless we go like that. Also like a... Um as you can see, like you have maybe five, six big chunky roots. Another possibility, if you want cassava for tape, for like a smaller cassava to cook as a potato, when you're planting, instead of, especially when you have like long spacing here, because 
from each one of those eyes you, you're going to have and maybe from here you're going to have a root coming out so what people sometimes do is like a they just do some take some nips and you can see the milk coming out and in that way instead of having like a five big roots you, you can have a bit more like like 10 smaller roots you know like thinner and smaller roots depending because on you did that. Good. yeah so these these new spots they would form um, more roots so instead of <coughs> focusing on one two three four big roots if i dig up to here they'll have like maybe eight nine roots because more medium roots. sized ones yeah yeah, yeah. um look at the earthworm activity in there and that's a big part of the structure that's going on here mm. like here you go here's one there's two um, can you tell us about like, why, why there's earthworms here so well one of the stories around this is that i mean many plants many vigorous fast growing plants in the early stage of succession tend to create a whole bunch of root exudates that they pump into the soil and it feeds the soil biology um i suspect that cassava has been doing that job really well the last couple of years and each time we prune it it again exacerbates the amount of exudates that it exudes into the soil and as it's doing that as it feeds the biology the the, the faster moving bacteria and quicker biology it builds a whole food chain for the larger soil biology like the earthworms so this is uh, the, the the happiness of the earthworms in here despite it being a low energy input system is largely been driven by the plant exudates from the fast growing cassava so in the wet season when it's hot and wet drop these things on the ground and you get Three weeks of rain, they start to set root as well. It's nasty. Um, whereas, but that won't store. This is the cutting that's going to store you three months. Those woodier ones. Um, as soon as they move from, in my experience, as soon as they move from predominantly green to the browner, the sort of whiter browner, and different varieties will have different coloured stems. But once they've lost that green sheen, they're they're the ones you want to store. That's what I work on anyway. Yeah. That's the one that's a good cutting, like in the wet season, that's a great cutting. Boom, straight in the ground, it'll grow really well, but it won't store three months. I actually save, like, a, the way I've seen it done, like in, in big scale, you save the whole plant upright in a frost-free uh, area, like okay. a, with a shade, and like a, under the house or whatever. Just, it needs to be upright, it doesn't need a bucket. It's like you said, if, yeah. it, if, you, if it has enough humidity, if the sun mm. is not hitting it hard, it's going to be alive. You just take, mm. you just take the bottom part. If you have roots coming in a bucket, you take the bottom part and you, you use all the rest. Like mm. you, you do the cuttings. so you leave those leaves on and they draw back in to feed the yeah. You just yeah, leave like you, plant you harvest the, the whole plant and you put them in the frost feed. Like so the, the green place. and the wood. The wood is good for storage. Yeah. You should make a cassava song. Wood is good. You've got you got to rhyme to start it. Wood is good. That yeah. could be the song. <laughs> All right, let's carry that all down to the kitchen. 